Have you seen the recent boom of master resale rights opportunities popping up? Maybe you've heard it called MRR. If not, listen in as I share my thoughts on buying and reselling products you didn't necessarily create. And when I say products, I mean online courses. Is it good or bad for the rest of us who are creating our own programs and educational experiences? Keep listening and I'm going to give you my two cents (laughs) or a little bit more. So last year, a new type of digital product came to light, for me anyways, it may have been going on before that, and actually I know it has, but last year, a new type of product came to light that people started talking about on TikTok and Instagram. Lots of smiling, happy faces, talking about the results they got in a short time, and their platforms had grown, they can do this, they can do that, freedom lifestyle. So much easy success with these ready-to-sell courses. Now, if you've ever struggled creating a course, trying to launch it, trying to keep selling it, then you might have seen these and been like, dang, maybe I should try this. And I'm going to tell you something. I discovered other people who've bought and sold these specific types of MRR products. I have this random ability to find things When I'm not even looking, I find established businesses, people that I know personally who've been in business for years, all of a sudden I I notice something, whether it's a profile name, it's an email address, or it's on an actual website on a page that's not linked to their main site, that kind of thing. And I always find those things. Actually, it comes in handy in other areas of my life, but Let me just tell you, I was surprised, but I want to tell you that before you think that what I'm about to say today is a slam against anyone deciding to go this route, think again, because I feel like there are some positives and of course there's always risks to doing this kind of thing. Reselling or licensing products is not a new business model and it's kind of similar in a weird way to affiliate marketing and we'll talk about this in a little bit. There are people who license the rights to change everything about a program down to re-recording and branding it even. Those are very specific rights, usually not master resale rights or MRR, but those have existed for years. You might not even know that there are a few very successful courses that I'm aware of that were are licensed material, meaning the person who owns the license can do pretty much what they want with it for at least the the few things that I know about. And I'm not about to out anybody for doing this because I think it's helpful, especially if you have a full product suite. And there's one thing that you really want to create. You There is a license for it. That's an opportunity. You still have to do all the work to build that audience. You still have to create that product. I think it's okay to do that. But I just wanted to bring that up because people have been doing this for years at this point. And in fact, I'm even thinking of a licensing program that Danielle Laporte created for two of her products, the Firestarter Sessions, and there's another one, the Desire Map. And I don't think people are teaching courses on those, but they're definitely doing coaching. So they do have a coaching service where they are a re- they're not really a reseller, but they're licensing the right and getting certified in the method and able to then teach it. And as of this recording, I actually have no idea if those things are still in play. I don't know if people are still using those. I don't see why they wouldn't because they were solid programs to begin with. So just know, though, that this idea of purchasing the right to resell or recreate someone's basic content. It happens in all different formats. I mean, you even look at creativemarket.com and you'll see people who sell tons of templates and you decide what level of license you purchase. You can buy the commercial license to resell that template. So just know this whole idea of reselling ain't a big deal. But Something about the way the two main courses that I'm going to talk about today that broke through really got everyone up in a tizzy, really got everything worked up. Everybody and everybody was talking about how well they worked. 
Maybe it was timing. Maybe it was good marketing. Maybe it was TikTok. I'm not sure. But it hit at the right place, time, energetic location in the universe. And those two programs, one was called, I believe, the Roadmap. Now it might be the Roadmap 3.0 and Simply Passive. Those are the two that I'm most aware of. But actually, even just this week, I discovered a few more and I was like, oh, that's interesting. People are getting on this, this bandwagon of creating something that they can then sell to other people to do it as they wish. Like, you can resell it. The roadmap has been on the market since February 2023. And Simply Passive came out to, I don't I think around November 2023. So they're not long time courses or anything like that. And that's okay. One thing I will say before I, I talk about what is in this episode is that I have looked inside Simply Passive. And while I'm not going to say anything negative about the course, for me, knowing that I've been in business for so many years, it's not unlike in various elements. If I were to pull different courses together, things that I have learned and purchased up until now. So it can stand, I think, right alongside those other things that I have learned from. So this is not a critique of the programs themselves, because I think that is up to the individual person to do that. And if it works for them. That said, today we are going to be talking about some of the potential opportunities in selling courses like these. We're going to also talk about some of the risk of selling courses like these and or reselling rather. And we're also going to talk about who might want to think twice about selling these offers. And if you're thinking twice, what should be, you be thinking about and considering before you actually move ahead? And then finally, we're going to just answer the question, or I'm going to answer the question in my point of view, is this a solid business model? And you might be surprised at that answer, so stick around until the end. Okay, so first, let's dive into opportunities. So I really do think reselling is an opportunity. OK, it is an opportunity, just like people who do affiliate marketing and have the delivery done by someone else. This has that same benefit. It really does. When you're first starting your business, you might just need to make some money while you're getting your content, your website, your communication, what you're doing up and running. And this is an opportunity to practice selling, practice launching. And if you've listened to me in the past, you know, I talk about practicing launching and different ways to do that. But practicing your marketing, and when I say practice, it's because it can often feel super easy or much easier to sell someone else's stuff before your own. I get that. And that's why some people choose to go the be an affiliate route, because it is once you love something someone does and you've taken a program or if you've used a product, it's easy to talk about that product. Sometimes we don't have that same distance from our own things. And so it becomes a little bit more challenging coming up with the messaging for our own products. So if you are someone who's like thinking, gosh, you know, I really want to start making sales immediately. I don't want to have to go into six months of content creation or six months of product creation. But if you are able now, I'm not guaranteeing that you can do this, and I don't think even the owners of the main owners of the course or anybody who's marketing it will tell you that it's immediate. But if you could start making sales more quickly, it can also be an incredible boost to your confidence, to your family's income, which then boosts their confidence in you even pursuing this business. But <laughs> like I said, there is some risk here. And the opportunity does not come without that risk, because I think that, first of all, you need to go through the programs that you're planning on reselling yourself. You need to listen to that voice, the way they're teaching, what they're saying, know that content as if it were your own, and actually ask yourself, how does this fit with my values or my vision of a business, because you might not have your fully laid out business plan or you might not have your products created, but I bet you can 
get a little bit of a gut check on whether something is really feels like you. And no one is saying that you are pulling these off like they are your products, right? They aren't your product. However, you want it to feel like an extension of you, I think, in order for it to really work well. Is it something you want to be part of in the long run? Is it a short-term offering? You can decide all that. You know, just like partnering with, let's say, sponsors or collaborating with other businesses, or saying yes to affiliate opportunities, you need to look at the big picture and decide if it aligns with who you are and at least potentially what you want to accomplish with your business. Because simply buying one of these courses, like I said before, it does not guarantee you're going to sell anything. And as you'll see, if you really dig in online and you start looking up, what is this all about? So many people are selling them, they're reselling courses, but (laughs) so many people aren't. And you still need to get messaging, personality, your consistency. You have to, you have to be able to, and be willing to show up on visibly on certain platforms that are right for you and right for your ideal audience. You have to define who you want to reach. You still have to do the work to be building a real business in order for it to truly work in the long run. And the people that I've seen who are really flourishing or who have flourished with these, that's what they are. They're really building their brand. They're digging their heels in and they are attracting the people that they want to work with. Can this program come back to bite you? Maybe, maybe not. Like I, total transparency, I purchased one of them By the way, I purchased one of them from someone who isn't selling it according to the licensing rules. And I didn't know that until I purchased it. And then I was looking at the program and stuff. And I said, oh, wow, this person isn't allowed to sell it like this. But I just was like, no, because I'm already talking about a lot of this stuff. This is not something that I would want to sell. Where would this even fit for me? At some point, You get to remove it from your site if you don't want to. You can certainly try it and then just sell your own things if you want. Or maybe you become known for what's in this program and you and then you create a next step for your ideal customers. It's not all bad, but it's definitely something to think about and think through for yourself. Businesses, personal brands definitely want to go through the content with a fine tooth comb to ensure that it really does align with who you are on what you've already created in your business. The thing for me is if it were a framework that I haven't presented in some form and I was able to record content myself, I would possibly do it. But I don't see the value in putting someone else's course, someone else's voice in front of my, in front of you. You hear me every flipping week. Why would I want to do that? However, if I were just starting, I might consider it for real. And the final question is just, it's going to be up to you to answer. Should I do this or not? There are definitely different ways that, like I told you, I by mistake found people selling it that I was like, why are they selling it? One woman, I was just actually both of my recent rando discoveries. I was like, why are they selling this? They both have extremely successful businesses. And these are under the cover of some miscellaneous name, but I just happened to see, it's just a long story. I happened to see an email on and and a website on both of them. I was like, oh gosh, why are they doing it? So that's, if that came up for me, I would hope that, that my ideal customer avatar would actually say the same thing. If they saw, they're like, why is this on Anne's website? You know what I mean? So you just have to do that check with yourself to see what's going to work for you. If you're just building your audience and you feel like you want something to sell, just know that you're still going to have to build your audience. You're still going to have to get used to communicating the value of this resellable product. Master resells, the one thing I wanted to say also is master resell rights often don't give you the right to change that content of the course or add your two cents in any way, or include any additional bonuses, or use it as a bonus, 
You must sell the content without your own voice on it. You may be able to do some surface branding changes, but they are pretty strict about pricing and the content inside. Now, private label rights, I did find a few things that I thought were interesting when I was reading though the fine print for PLR products is I can I could see like I could see that they do allow changing of the content and not dismantling it necessarily, but adding in so it's more integrated. But even that I think is gonna is going to even that will vary from from agreement to agreement. So just read that fine print, okay? Like I said, it would just feel weird if I'm selling someone else's course, but not unlike affiliate marketing, except that affiliate marketing relationship is a clear one saying, hey, go work with this person. A referral is a little bit different than reselling, I think, on an energetic level. Personally, I think there are some benefits to starting with something that's already created. And the opportunity here is that you might be inspired to create something specifically for your customers to license or resell if they want to. Okay, so there's opportunity here. There's risk. Who should think twice and what to consider first? So first, I want to just talk about you. If you are a new business owner, just starting things up, think through your whole vision, your whole model. You'll still want to define your customer avatar, like I said, and who you want to sell to and who you're, mess- who you're going to be trying to connect with and how your messaging will look, how it will sound, where you will show up, what kind of, are you going to have a website? Are you going to have a blog? Are you going to have a podcast? Are you just, are you going to, what are you going to send in your emails? What is your, there are still things that you still are going to have to figure out. That is not the like leapfrog. You'll also want to figure out where and I by the way I'm saying this knowing full well I know a lot of people I see them who appear to just have a stand store and their Instagram or their TikTok profiles and that's how they're selling it and my hope is that they are also building their business their brand their own platform behind that okay if you're an existing business owner if you've got your own business you've been running that look at your existing offers Look at your brand. Look at your current ICA. Is this really right for them? Does it align with other programs? And is that value there in the same way that you've created it? You know what I mean? Does it feel like it could fit into that little ecosystem of your products, even if it's not yours? And how can you speak about, how would you speak about the new offer with integrity and make sure it would provide value for your ideal customers. You don't want to damage your reputation or your relationship with your audience. No matter how big, small, whatever it is, just know that what you put in front of people and assuming that they've come to you for advice in the past, you want to make sure it's good advice. So that's why I say go through the program, okay? And the final thing, Is selling an MRR, a Master Resale Rights course program, a viable business model? For me, it's not. But I can see a place for it in people's lineups of courses, if in their curriculum, if they so choose to do it. And I feel like now that there's going to be more specialized MRRs coming out, not just very basic overarching business courses, I think that's where the opportunity really is. So looking for those specific holes in your curriculum, which means you got to look at your curriculum and say, oh, well, what's missing here? Is there a chat GPT course? Look for the holes in your own lineup so that it doesn't take away from what you've already created. I want no one who's doing this kind of selling to feel shame for selling like this. If you truly don't have the time to make a website and you're like, okay, I'm going to build my brand and my audience on Instagram and or TikTok or wherever, like I'm just going to use those. And I'm going to create a stand store, which allows me to put my whole sales process in place, emails and all, they process payment through that, everything. It's really great. Then do that. If you need to do that, this is definitely an option for someone who is just getting started in that way. But 
I want you to go through the program, please. No shame for reselling, but go through the program you're reselling so you know what you're doing and aim for, aim higher. Aim to share something you've created, okay? Because I won't shame you because there are big names that sell licensed material, sell these MRRs, and some of them are hiding it under different names. And your girl Anne found them by mistake. But I'm sure you might find them if you start looking. And it, it wasn't like I was looking for someone specific and are they using it. And no matter what you are currently, where you are in your business, and what you hope to reach in terms of goals, the way MRRs will work the best is with a solid strategy, you going through the programs with a fine tooth comb, and seeing what's next, right? Or look for very specialized courses that are programs that you can resell as part of your curriculum. Maybe something you don't want to keep updating, you know, that you just want, like, it, maybe I want to find a mini chat program. Maybe I want to find a chat GPT program and then just pop those in along the path for someone who might want to purchase one. But Simply Passive, the roadmap, I'm not going to do those because those are such big marketing programs. And to be honest, I already support people who have those types of programs. So in conclusion, I'd highly recommend checking out these courses so you at least know what they are. There are several different ones now that I've seen. And if you're willing to buy them or one of them, at least, you can check them out just to see what it's all about and see if selling one is right for you. If you want to chat about this topic, I have been getting some questions about it, so we might do this on our next monthly call inside the Fearless Launching Growth Club, which is just a mini membership. It's where you can come in, no strings attached, low monthly subscription, and just ask your questions, get support on launches, just, just be in a group of people doing what you're doing, and maybe we'll do a screen share or something like that on the next call. But if you want to know more about that Fearless Launching Growth Club, you can look below. That is specifically for people who are creating, launching, selling online products, online services, courses, digital products, memberships. I would love to see you in there, of course, because I love answering questions and I love getting on Zoom. Last week, we had a co-working session, which was a lot of fun. But that is it. MRR is not the evil of the world. It is a possible opportunity for you. And I want you to make that decision for yourself. So that is it for today. I'm going to be back next week with another episode. As always, if you're not following along with us on YouTube, make sure you head over there. There's a link below. Subscribe and then you can listen. And when we have live streams over there, you'll immediately get that invite as well. All right. Take care and I will talk to you soon.